Howdy everyone, I'm glad you're joining me today because I'm going to be making this bluegill swim bait. So stick around, I hope you enjoy it. Alright, uh, now that I've got my sketch complete here, I want to go over some of the features of this perch lure. Um, of course we got the line tie up front, uh, two belly hooks, and you can see it's a three segment swim bait. As is usually the case, I had to do a little bit of abbreviating and uh, work with my fins, uh, particularly these on the top you can see. I brought them back just a hair so that they will all be on that middle segment. I don't really like the lures where they cut the fins in the middle, I think it looks weird. So I wanted to get all my, all my fins on the same segment so that they're a nice solid piece. I also folded these down just slightly uh, instead of the full upright and you can see where I've erased and redrawn several times to get uh, the right shape. And then these, uh, these fins on the bottom, I kind of folded them down a little bit so that it's all even along the belly there uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it'll swim a little bit better and then two, uh, I, I don't want to interfere with my hooks very much. It might... Uh, increase my hookup ratio a little bit if those hooks are not, you know, up in the fins and everything. I'm going to do pinned connections for the joints in the in the two segments here. Uh, and that should allow me to have a little bit tighter joint than, um, than I've done before. I also move those fins out of that way so that I can actually do the pinning uh, without having fins in the way. Same thing with this first one. I'm gonna start these fins just behind that pin. So I'm gonna make a, a photocopy of this and then we'll cut it out, trace it onto our block of wood and get started. Hey, I just wanted to take a second here to thank y'all for all of your comments and for your suggestions. Occasionally I get a really good suggestion and I got one from a subscriber here recently uh, suggesting that if I got a thinner blade for my bandsaw it'd be easier to make those turns and uh, I've just been lazy honestly and just been using the blade that came with it and uh, trying to make do with what I've got but uh, I appreciate the push I thank you for for the comment and I do have a new blade for that I'm gonna put it on right now and we'll keep going Works better when you plug it in. Alright, this is an excellent time to go ahead and cut those uh, joints while it's still square. Okay, I also want to um, mark the center line. And so to do that, I have this I'm not entirely sure what it's called, but it's basically a gauge and I can set it to whatever I want. The easiest way I know of to make sure I'm in the center is to set my gauge and then flip it around to the other side. And if it hits the same line, then I am in the center and you can take this and scribe it all the way. I'm just going to go ahead and do both sides. And then that little scratch tells me exactly where the center is. So 
So you want to cut it to somewhere in there. You don't, you want to leave enough to where it doesn't break loose and you can continue to carve, but that it's deep enough that you can put your blade in it later without having to set up a jig and finish off the cut. All right, while well, we still got this squared up, let's also go ahead and cut the tail fin slot. We need to find the widest part of the fish, which is going to be somewhere right in here. Let's just say an inch and a half. Let's just say that. Okay. So that's going to be the wide part. And then we're going to taper down to a pretty small nose. I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch here. Draw a straight line. Of course, it's not going to be a straight line like that. Round the nose. Kind of arch. And then the back. Let's also do a quarter of an inch. I don't really feel the need on the back part of the fish to do that arch like we did on the front, but the front is a little bit more rounded like that. And then the back will just do a straight taper. Uh, now you could put this on the bandsaw and cut those off. I think as little material as we're talking about, I'm just going to sand it off. As I'm carving here, I need to be careful of this spot right here because I can start getting some some big, uh, uh, oh, what's the wood carving term? It'll it'll start tearing out the wood there. So you can see the way the, the grain's running like this. If I get right here, I'm cutting kind of against the grain a little bit or at least obliquely to the grain and it comes off okay, no problem. I can cut to the line, but then if I get up here, it's going to want to take a big chunk. You see how that splits out like that? So I'm going to have to be really careful along here. Again, though, when I get back here, once I get down into that grain where I'm not cutting parallel with the grain, it cuts nicely again. The other thing you need to be careful about is I've got these chamfer marks right here and they're kind of wide as we get down to this tail. It gets pretty fine here, so I'm not going to really cut to the lines on those. I'm just going to cut a little bit of material like that. And then once I get up, up here, I'll start flaring out to my cut lines. Now the way that I'm going to deal with this up here is I'm just going to take really small bits at a time. That way I don't get too much tear out.
one of two ways that you can go about smoothing out some of these carvings that you've done. Uh, one is to fold up a piece of sandpaper and get in there and sand it out. And the other is with a rotary tool. Now I'm going to kind of do a hybrid. I'm going to use a rotary tool to get in there and smooth the bulk of the work. Uh, and then I'll follow up with some fine sandpaper to, uh, to finish it off. And the main reason I'm going with the rotary tool is that it's faster. But if you don't have a rotary tool, you can get this job done with some sandpaper. And I want to try and keep my cut kind of straight up and down as much as possible. Don't get too hung up on that though. I'm going to come in at another angle and cut to that line. See, and I flaked off a piece there. Let's see if I can show you how deep that is. Yeah, there you go. You can see what I'm doing is I'm smoothing that out. I did kind of a 45 degree angle or so cut, but what I want to do is kind of round that out a little bit and expand that groove so it's not so harsh. I like to finish it up with sandpaper because I have the most control over it. Before I uh, get to carving around the face here, I'm going to go ahead and drill the eye. And um, I'm going to use a Forstner bit on that. This is going to be a 3 8 inch Forstner. There's a few little places that I still need to sand on a little bit, like right there is a little rough, there's a little rough. You know, just get it, get it to a point that you're happy with. I want to make these fins out of that white alumilite material because I think it's more durable. Um, I could have carved these onto the lure as wood, but as you know, wood can break pretty easily. So I don't really want to have these fins hanging out like that and be susceptible to breakage on my bass lure. I did do the tail, but it was really thick and uh, I'm wanting to make this quite a bit thinner for this particular lure. So I'm going to go with that Alumalite for this and give that a shot. Um, and I don't really want to carve these and make a mold and go to all that trouble. Uh, if I were making quite a few of these lures, I would probably take the time to make a mold. But in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make myself a sheet of that alumilite 
And then I'm going to carve those just like I would uh, if it was a piece of wood. And then I'll install those into my lure. I'm going to add a little tab here like so. Let's see. Once again, a uh, scrap plywood comes in to save the day. My mixture here is going to be uh, 15 grams of part A of this uh, Alumalite casting resin, 15 grams of part B, and then 2.4 grams of these Alumalite micro balloons, which is about 8%. Well, it is exactly 8% of the volume by weight. All right, that's had plenty of time to set up. So this is kind of what I was talking about, why I want to use this material. It's, it's stiff and it's tough and it bends just a little bit. So it ought to be, it ought to make a good fin material if you're wanting something a little more rigid. I wanted something like this so I can paint it to match the lure and maintain that durability. When you're working with this stuff, you want to wear uh, your goggles and your hearing protection uh, and a mask because you don't want to breathe any of this stuff in. Take a little bit larger uh, rat tail file here and on this softer fin back here I'm gonna kind of sand a groove into it I'm gonna do another little wave back here All right, something that I think is worth pointing out here is, uh, so you remember the large waves that I added to this side. When I do waves on the other side, I do it opposite. So I've got two waves here and one wave here so that it alternates and it creates that wavy look. Uh -huh. 
I'm going to trace around my fin here. All I'm going to need to do is sand, uh, sand that a little bit to get it smooth, and then I can get a file in there. There's a little piece I can file that out. That shouldn't be a problem. Once again, I'm going to be using the 0.041 stainless steel lock wire linked in the description below. This is a really simple process. If you've if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen me do this before, it's pretty easy. I like to start with a seven inch piece of wire and then I fold it over and get it started with a pair of pliers. Just give it a little twist here. That allows me to chuck it up inside the, the drill easier. And then once I've got it in the chuck, pinch it really good. And then I've got a little screwdriver here. It's uh, one of those eyeglass screwdrivers. Uh, and the reason I'm using that instead of like a nail is that this is a hardened steel, so it's not going to bend on me. Wind up with a really nice uh, twist eye. So let's make six more just like that. Before we get too far down the road here, let's think about how we're going to uh, embed these wires. For the tail section, this line represents our cut line and this dash line represents the leading edge here or the inside of that, right? So you can see how there's, there's that offset there. So I'm gonna want two wires screwed in this way with a loop here and here and i was going to do the uh the uh pin to hold it right there and then the same thing's going to happen up here you're going to have your your loop your loop and then your wire is going to be embedded into this piece and then for the line tie we'll just do a piece in here the belly will do a line here and then align here. So this is really the only one where we gotta be kinda careful so that we don't have a conflict with our wires, but I, th I think that's pretty easy to remedy. So on this head piece, what I'll do for that bottom wire is that I'll just kinda screw it over slightly like that so that it's out of the way and then that belly hook can go straight up and they shouldn't hit each other. I am not positive what size drill bit that is, but basically all you need is a bit that's going to be slightly bigger than your wire. This is the tricky one where I'm going to angle it over and down.
we are at the point now where we're ready to cut the slots for our joints here. Actually didn't mean to go all the way through, but I did it anyway. I actually intended to drill from each side, which would help prevent that. Put a little dab of super glue on there to try and fix that. Okay, so now that I've got my hole through there, let's uh, <clears throat> figure out where we're gonna cut. So you can see I drilled down past my hole. What that'll do is that'll allow me enough room to put, put my, my loop in and for my wire to engage that, okay? Now when I uh, go to waterproof this, I'm gonna soak it all in super glue and I'm gonna wanna make sure that I get it down in the holes as well because what I'm, I wanna do is strengthen that wood up as much as possible, both on the outside and the inside. Um, and I'm not real worried about gumming up the holes because I can always re-drill them, but that strength is what I'm looking for. Okay. I got good movement. Happy with that. You can see down in there that I've got a little bit of wiggle room. I don't want too much, but I've got a little bit of wiggle room in there to get that adjusted up and down right. So let's try something. I'll bend it up slightly. Yeah. There you go. See, now we're now we're aligned well. I just bent that bottom one up slightly, but I didn't sacrifice any of my movement there. So there's a little there's a little give in there. There's a little bit of adjustment that you can have to get that to work right. That's good. Okay. For sealing your wood, uh, there's a couple of routes you can go on that. One is to use polyurethane where you can hang it from a wire, dip it in there, let it drip, uh, and let it dry. And you can do that several times and you can get a good waterproof coating over it. Uh, or you can use this stuff, which is commonly referred to as super glue, but it's this Cyano, cry your, cry your eyes out. <laughs> and I say that because it, it does burn your eyes. Uh, before I start doing this though, I'm gonna put on a, I'm gonna put on a respirator. This particular flavor that I'm using is uh, super thin, the one to three second glue. They have several uh, different thicknesses. Um, I'm using this one because it's really thin, it soaks in and, and I think does a better job of uh, making a shell uh, on this lure. Now that I've got all my pieces uh, sealed, I'm ready to epoxy in the hardware. Uh, on this middle section, I'm going to, I'm going to install the top fin, but I am not going to install this bottom fin yet. I'm going to set that aside because I'm still, I'm still going to need to add my ballast, my uh, lead in the bottom. And, uh, I don't want that fin being in the way. Before we get going on adding lead to this, I need to temporarily pin these pieces together. I've taken some of this uh, stainless steel wire, the same stainless steel wire that I used to make the hardware, and I cut a couple of pins. And uh, we're just gonna drop those in. 
And then I'm going to tack that one down with some hot glue for kind of a temporary hold there. When it comes to adding weight to my lures, if you're new to the channel, I have a, I have a particular method that I like to use. I take a piece of wood and I take different sizes of Forstner bits and I drill different depths into the wood and then I pour uh, some molten lead into those and what I get is a bunch of these little, little lead weights, right, that match my Forstner bit. And then um, from there, what I can do is I can take my hot glue gun and I can hot glue them into the locations that uh, I think I need weight and that gives me kind of a temporary setup that that I can pop them off when I'm done but it lets me play with where I put the weight and how much weight I put in there also I've got a swivel on the front and I'm gonna hang some hooks with with the rings already attached on there to kind of simulate my my final setup oh. okay so that's not that's not sinking at all I think if I add a medium back up here it might work uh, the bulk of my flotation is right here in this head piece so I think it just needs a little bit more help so really I can just pop that off just like that super easy and I'll put a little dot of hot glue there and then I'll put a medium and let that cool for just a second and then we'll test that again yeah see that's a pretty good let's take it let's take a real close look at that make sure we're good Something to keep in mind though is that I'm going to be adding some clear coat and some uh, foil uh, for the scales, which is going to add a little bit of weight. So it may sink a little bit faster, but uh, I think we're I think we're in the right ballpark. So these two in the back are going to be about half half the depth, and then this one's going to be just shy of a full depth. blocking off with a little bit of masking tape here because I don't want this uh, super glue to run all over the place and I really don't want to get it down in that uh, joint there so I'm taping that. I'm going to go ahead and tack that fin into place with super glue. Put a little baking soda around it. It has a nice little gentle, effortless looking swim to it. As you see, I've got two lures here that I've been working on. I've been uh, kind of working them both along at the same time. Uh, they're pretty close to identical. There's a few little differences to them um, being handmade lures. That's kind of the nature of a handmade lure. but. Um, the one that I showed you in the test pool was this one, and it had a pretty decent swimming action to it. Uh, one of the reasons it doesn't have a really tight wiggle to it, or a, or a very exaggerated swim to it, is twofold. One, I don't have a, a ton of joint movement here. It's kind of a tight joint. And then the other is these vertical fins. Uh, these vertical fins tend to straighten the swim out as it goes. Um, and so I think a lot of times you'll see like in a manufactured lure, 
there won't really be any fins up here. There might be a little bit of a fin here at the back or a little bit down here, but it's maybe half the size of these lures or less. Uh, just little nubs, really. And I think that's why. I think I think these tend to straighten it out in the water, kind of like an arrow. And so uh, it inhibits that swimming action. Um, however, I'm pretty happy with the swimming action I was getting on this lure. Uh, so I'm going to continue moving forward with it um, without, without any kind of changes to it. But um, this lure, for whatever reason, wasn't swimming very well at all. And... Um, it kind of has the same range of movement to it, same fins, same everything as far as I can tell, but it doesn't want to swim. So I've decided to make some bonus footage for you on this video. I'm going to insert a lip on this lure to hopefully try and impart a little bit more action on it. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit vertical. I don't want it to, I don't want it to cause any diving or anything like that. I'm just trying to get a little bit more movement out of it. Um, with these types of lures, you see them both ways. Sometimes you see them with a lip, sometimes you don't. So um, really that decision's kind of up to you, I guess, on, on how you'd like to do your lure. Um, I'm gonna do it kind of as an experiment to see you know, what the difference is between the two. Uh, since this one has a pretty good swim already, I'm gonna leave it alone and then I'll add a lip slot to this. Now, I. I would not typically add a lip at this stage. It's pretty far along for adding a lip. Um, ordinarily, I would do that a lot sooner in the build. Okay, I know none of those markings make sense to you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start my cut halfway between these two, and I'm gonna cut all the way up to that point. Okay, let me give you a kind of a closer look at what we got here. You can see I did find that wire. It's got to be the tail end of that, that one over there. But at any rate, once I hit it, I stopped uh, cutting and then I widened out my slot. Now part of the reason I'm able to get away with adding this slot uh, a little bit more accurately is because it is still somewhat of a flat-sided lure. And so uh, I was able to get it laid flat to cut that. So. I've I'm going to put a mark on either side here where, where it winds up, and then I'm going to put a mark right here to indicate my depth, okay? You know, something like that. Let's just do a one inch. You don't need a terribly long lip on this one because, again, we're not trying to make it dive. We're just trying to make it uh, wiggle a little bit more. All right, I want to do, I, I'm really kind of partial to the coffin clip. All right, so let's cut that out and then sand it. And then I'll probably just do a little compression fitting in there uh, without gluing it in just to see if it makes any difference first. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of super glue in there to waterproof that. Something I forgot to mention earlier, I've, I've put a little dot of hot glue on the barbs of these hooks uh, just so that I don't tear a hole into my, uh, my swimming pool. All right, well, let's take it to the pool and check it out. Oh yeah. Yeah, that made a lot of difference. Matter of fact, if you want to fish one a little faster, that lip really does help. Let's do some fast. I'm going to show you some fast passes here. It rattles.
I'm gonna foil these two lures and what I'm gonna use is air conditioning uh, tape. It's a foil tape. The particular kind I've got is uh, Sure Tape AF914. Um, I'm not really sure how important that is other than a lot of them that you see at the hardware store have something printed on them and this is the one that I found that didn't have any kind of lettering or anything on it. I don't want any scale pattern on that part. So I'm going to take my fingernail and I'm going to do a rubbing. It's very important that this doesn't move. I'm going to do a rubbing, but I'm not going to rub inside that gill area. I'm going to stop right there. All right, that should be pretty good. Then you can see we get a nice cool scale pattern. Okay. I'm gonna smooth down the center. Okay, now with my thumb, I'm going to mash around on the face area and find all of my features. out looking really nice. All right, once you get it to a good uh, level there that you're happy with, uh, I like it just pretty smooth with kind of a frosted look. Okay, generally speaking, I like to epoxy that in there. I want to take some rubbing alcohol and then I'm going to gently kind of wipe the foil you don't want to soak it and you don't want to get it all wet but what you're trying to do is uh, wipe off any fingerprints that you might have left on there or any uh, dirt or debris or anything like that I'm gonna kick it off with some opaque white here Next color we're going to lay down is pearl satin gold and what we're going to attempt to do on this is spray the top and then kind of fade it about to the midline there. Detail Moss Green. Wicked Laguna Blue. All right, I feel like that uh, blue is the right color, but I feel like it's a little bit heavy handed. So I'm going to kind of mist over it a little bit with some pearl white. Here's a comparison. See what I mean? It just, just takes the edge off of that bright, bright, bright blue. 
Fluorescent Sunburst. It's time to do the ear detail and what I did is I took my a uh, little template that I've been using and I cut out uh, that spot. I went a little past where I'm going to go because I'm going to lay this here carefully and I'm going to spray and let it fade, okay? All right, I've got some epoxy mixing over there. Um, while we're waiting on that to mix, I'm gonna go ahead and put the eyes on. And we will be using Rule Outdoors, the Raven 10 millimeter. Turned out pretty good. Um, for this lure, I'm using that True Coat stuff again. Uh, and uh, pretty happy with it. We need to do a little bit of work here on the bottom and the top covering the seams. So I'm gonna start with Pearl White. When you're done, that uh, seam should go away. Okay. Got my detail moss green loaded up. And I'm going to spray these stripes. The key to this is I'm going to start kind of dark up here and then let it fade out. Well, I've still got my detail moss green in my uh, airbrush. I'm going to cover the seams on the top. The, the green stripes don't meet up at the back. So I'm gonna add green along the back. Then I'm gonna come back and put a little dot at each one. Okay, and you can see what that does is it blends it into the back more perfectly. Opaque black. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to realign my paper, and then when I spray, I'm going to spray really on the paper and let it overspray slightly onto my work. Our last color, Detail Raw Umber. And I'm gonna spray that kind of kind of a wide pattern across the top. Okay, just for comparison's sake, this is the side I just sprayed versus that side. It's not a whole lot different, but I do think it makes makes a little bit more realistic look. This might be a little bit better comparison. This side with the brown, obviously, and this side without. So if you want a little bit more green, a little bit more shine, leave it like that. Totally up to you. There's no rules here. I seem to have outdone myself again um, on not leaving myself any space to put my decal. So I got my signature on the tail here. And then this middle section, there's a little space right there. I'm going to be honest, I don't think that's enough. 
So I'm gonna put my logo right up in the front. Uh, it's not my favorite spot, but it will work. I know a lot of you have seen this, but if you're new to the channel, this is a this is simply a water slide decal that I printed myself. It's the exact same decal that you would use on a, a model model airplane, model car, something like that. I think that turned out pretty well. We're going to remove them from the clamps. Need to re ream some of these holes. They got a little bit of epoxy in them. There's a little bit of a rub in the tail there. Oh yeah, there's a lot of epoxy in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that made a big difference. That's what it was. Now also, also I've gotten in there and I've tried to clean these wires off a little bit and I got them pretty close. There's still a little bit of paint and gunk on it. Uh, that will wear off with just a little bit of use, uh, but I wanted to get it kind of as smooth as I could. I'm gonna put a dab of glue in that hole there, put it together, put my rod in and let that glue set up. And then I'll put a little bit of glue on this end to seal that off. And so I'll come back to you when I've got that all done. This end, I'm gonna bend this over all the way and crimp it down like so. And I'm gonna put that in through the bottom Now before I before I push it in all the way, I'm gonna put a little dot of glue on it. And then push it in. All right, guys, here's the finished product. I'm very pleased at how it turned out. Something else I wanted to show you on this tail uh, in particular, you know, uh, I used that uh, white casting resin, that aluminolite stuff. And uh, part of the reason I did that is because it's a lot more durable. And you can see I can bend that quite a bit without you know, damaging it or breaking it. Plus the clear coat that I'm using is flexible as well. So it's not cracking or doing anything like that. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to put this in the swim tank again and, and swim it a little bit more. And then hopefully I can take it fishing here in the next couple of days and uh, we'll see how we do. Um, but I appreciate you sticking with me this far and, uh, just kind of wanted to show you what we've got. Something I usually forget to do is weigh these things. So let's start with the lipped version. Add the hooks. One and a half ounces. I'm an ounce guy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna measure these in ounces. So 1.6 ounces pretty much for the lipped version. And then the lipless one. Oop. Gotta get it all the way on the scale here. Huh, that one actually weighs a little bit more. 1.7 ounces. 
Might have a little bit more wood in it, something like that. Hard to say. That fits a little better, yeah. I'm gonna do a swim test on the lipped version first. real real slow I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit I'll go real fast Okay, and then this one's gonna be the lipless option. This one has a little bit longer, slower glide to it. More of a casual swim. So I've gotten several requests to try and catch fish with the lures I make. To be honest, I don't really get much time to fish between work, family, and lure making. However, I did get a chance to fish these lures. At 3.17 in the afternoon, my line snapped as I made a cast, and I lost one of these lures, which now rests at the bottom of the lake. So after that, I really didn't want to risk losing the second lure on the same day, so I quit fishing the swim bait. It was kind of a slow day, however, I did catch a small bass on the mouse lure that I made in a previous video. Unfortunately, by that time of the day, I had quit videoing the fishing, and uh, so I don't have any video of that. I did put some pictures on my Instagram, though, um, as I generally do. So if you want to see some catches on the lures that I make, uh, Instagram's your best bet. My priority right now is to produce lure-making videos. So I'll try to get some fishing in. If I can, great. If not, I'm not going to hold up a video for that. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.